Hi, I'm Scarlett Evans and I'm here with Sarah Chapman who is the Executive Experience Strategy Officer for Adam and Eve. Sarah, can you start out by telling me about yourself, about your role, about Adam and Eve and also why you're here today, what you're going to showcase? Sure. So Adam and Eve is a creative agency. Um, my role there is uh, in experience strategy, as you talked about. So we're all about understanding the customer, understanding what they're doing, um, what they're saying, what they're thinking, what they're feeling. And AI obviously is a huge way for us to understand the customer better and to reach the customer better. So I've been quite passionate about it for, oh God, quite a while. Um, Partly because I'm a data geek and I love to understand you know, how stuff works, how things um, operate, uh, but partly because I think it's a really interesting way that you can start to meet customers um, where they are in a way that's really memorable and really meaningful for them. Mm. And I'm wondering, in a more general sense, mm. obviously AI has, in recent years, it's become such a, such a buzzword, something that we're seeing so much of, but how is that starting to shape the way that we consume things in the way that you can work to understand consumer behavior? So it's really interesting. Traditionally, the way that we understood consumers was uh, by qual groups. Mm. So we would go, we would talk to the consumers, we'd say, hey, you know, tell me about your routine. Tell me about uh, what you're doing. Tell me why you made that choice. And what data's really enabled us to do is to start to understand the difference between what people say they do and what they really do. You know, we're all digital practitioners. We've seen that whenever people are uh, doing anything online, they're leaving behind them these little signals, these little clues about what they're really doing, what they're really thinking. And I think by marrying those two together, you know, we get a far more holistic understanding of the consumer and we get to far more interesting insights. So to give you an example, a few years ago, um, I ran a really interesting project with women where they were talking to me about beauty. And these were women over 40, uh, some in their 50s, 60s. And when we spoke to them in our call groups, we said, look, you know, tell us what you're doing with your makeup. Tell us if you need help from a brand. And actually what we found uh, in the call groups was people going, no, no, I'm fine. I've been putting on my mascara for 50 years, love. You know, I don't need any help from some brand telling you what to do. But when we started to look at the data, we saw that women were seeking out help they were Googling, looking for help on how to uh, adjust their makeup for some of the signs of aging. So things like, you know, how do I do my secret uh, like eyeliner flick mm. uh, if I've got a bit of, bit of a few small lines, let's say, around my eyes? Um, how do I put on my lipstick when I've got a little bit of um, wrinkle around my face? And, you know, that was really fascinating to us because it was the first time we really saw that difference between what, you know, a consumer would tell us and what their data would signal to us. Mm. And what AI has allowed us to do is it allowed us to find those differences and those patterns at scale. So suddenly, rather than having to sift through manually and look for these differences and uh, look through these, uh, I suppose, uh, small nuggets, we can find many, many small nuggets or we can find bigger patterns as well. And to go back to your point on buzzwords, you know, there are many people out in the industry saying, oh, this is about cloud computing, or it's about data, or it's about um, a certain technology. But really, if you dig past the buzzwords, I believe that you know, AI is going to help us to be more creative in the way that we uh, understand humans and in the way that we reach them. And that's really where the leaders in the creative industry are going. They're saying, you know, let's get beyond the technology. Let's think about the people. Let's think about we, what we love, our craft, our creativity, and how we can use AI to uh, reimagine how we do that. Yeah, and it's interesting because I think when people speak about AI and they speak about data collection and how you use it, Creativity is not something that really comes into right. people's minds when it when you think about it. It's very much it's very separated, and I think that there's also obviously been a real concern about how. I think uh, not that this is necessarily true, but I think there can be a concern that too much data or reliance on technology detracts from the creativity. But it's interesting speaking to you, and you're sort of saying it's the opposite. It actually gives you more scope for creativity because your understanding of people is 
is clearer and so you can respond to it in a better way. Is that kind of a fair assessment? That's, that's really fair. It's clearer, it's richer, it's more nuanced. I think we've stopped thinking about people in these big segment groups mm -hmm. and we've started thinking about them as individuals. So, you know, what can I see um, that this person has, let's say I'm a, I'm a travel agent, what can I see that this person has booked recently? What can I see about their travel patterns? How do they behave when they are at the airport? Or how do they behave when they are on the plane? And how can I pull that down into an individual profile that I can then use to serve them better, to do more interesting things, to give them a better experience? Mm. And you know, when we, when we take those kind of uh, data points and we put them in a human context, it allows us to use all the brilliant creative talent we have in the agencies or in the creative industries to, uh, you know, to better reach the consumer, to find more interesting solutions. Mm. There's another side too to AI, and I think that's, that's also in helping us imagine more. You know, if you look at any tool, um, they, they start with like that imagine point, a prompt. It's just what you can imagine in your head. It's you setting out your picture, you know, your vision of how you might uh, create a new product or how a scene might look or how a film might look. And so AI is enabling people to better visualize their ideas, to bring them to life faster, mm. to bring them to life in a way that uh, maybe is more granular, easier to understand if you don't have the technical knowledge. And I think that's just brilliant because that allows us to uh, you know, share ideas with clients much better, get to market much faster, and ultimately make more creative stuff uh, and make more, I suppose, visionary stuff as well. Mm, so it's very much, it's a tool, it's an asset, it's not a replacement. Because I think, again, that's another concern that some people have is that it can maybe take over certain roles. But actually, from what you're saying, it's, it's very much a, it's an assistant that we can use if we, if we look at it in the right kind of way and we think about it in the right sort of way. You're totally right. And it's that shift in perspective, I think, that the industry is going through right now. Yeah. You know, it's that thinking about, I used to make everything myself. And now it's thinking about unlearning how we've uh, made things creatively and relearning how we use these tools at the moment. Mm. And, you know, I understand the fear. Fear comes with any big change. If you look back at the Industrial Revolution, there was a lot of fear about machines and factories and them taking over our lives and the loss of the pastoral. If you take it to, uh, let's think about the camera. Mm. When the camera first was invented, you know, people were, who were painters, they hated the camera. Mm. They said, this is going to eclipse painting. We're going to lose the art of painting. And we haven't lost the art of painting. You know, we've got painters and we have photographers now. Mm. And the same when you look at Photoshop. When Photoshop came in, again, there was a big resistance and people talking about shooting stuff in camera, so without the use of technology. Um, and now we've embraced Photoshop, we're able to do brilliant things with it. So I just see this as the next evolution of how we use our creative talents. Mm. And actually quite a balancing of creative talents. So I'm a person who, I love words. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a wannabe writer when I was a teenager growing up. And actually, I'm terrible in Photoshop, you know. I am okay at Instagram, I can use a filter, but when it gets to Photoshop, it's difficult. And suddenly with AI, I have the power to make a prompt, to generate my ideas, to share them in a visual way that people who aren't um, sort of, you know, aren't inspired by words, they're suddenly inspired by it as well. So it kind of levels the playing field back a little bit. Because you know, recently we've really swung very hard into visual creativity. We've seen TikTok creativity. We've seen uh, lots of people using, uh, you know, video editing apps. And I s those writers amongst us, uh, you know, it's been harder for us to express ourselves. Mm. So I think this, the use of AI, is going to bring the two types of creativity together a bit more. Mm. And there was something I saw that you posted recently about the need for awareness about bias in AI, so how is that also something that I suppose people could be more aware of when they are beginning to harness AI as a tool? Yeah, this is really important. Uh, so important to me as well, you know, I think AI is only as good as the data we put into it. And the problem is, is that the data we have at the moment, it represents society. So the society today, it has been very biased, you know, if you look back at images of CEOs, they are often men. If you look back at uh, images of uh, athletes, or any image, in fact, there's an underrepresentation of minority communities. And that's going to come through in AI. And I, I think that's something that historically we haven't necessarily looked at how the tools that we use work. You haven't pulled apart your camera and said, oh, 
how does this camera work? Mm. But with AI, it's so important that we pull apart the data that's gone into it because otherwise we're going to keep perpetuating those biases. We're going to keep working with them and we're going to generate work on top of them, which then goes back into your training data, back into feeding the AI. Mm. And ultimately, you know, it doesn't change society. So I always try to get people to question, you know, where's this data come from? What might the biases be that are in it? And what can I do that is going to change these biases? It's going to be a slow process. You know, we're not suddenly going to change the canon of art that's out there. We're not suddenly going to say, well, you know, there's, there's far more uh, female representation in classical art. We can't do that. But what we can do is we can start to make sure that we're aware of the biases we're creating, we're feeding in new data to train AI, so we're leveling that bias. Mm -hmm. And when we get work back, we're saying, is this the full perspective? Or is it a perspective maybe that represents the data set that's gone into the AI? Mm. You know, is it something that maybe I could add to? Is it something that maybe I as the human should tweak? Mm. And to go back to our, our discussion earlier on creativity, I think that's where a really interesting frontier of creativity is going to come from. You know, it's looking at what comes out of the AI and looking at how we add that human perspective and that human understanding mm. and we make the output better. Yeah, I feel like I, I have one final question. I, yeah. I feel like you've sort of answered it in what you've said already, but just, I guess looking forward, looking at the next 12 months when it comes to the use of AI in your specific industry, what are some of the things that you're expecting to see or maybe that you hope to see? What I would hope to see is curiosity. Mm -hmm. So the best creatives are going to be the ones that embrace AI. They're going to be the ones that fiddle with it, that look at prompts, that look at what comes out, that find new tools and experiment. Mm. So I would really hope to see uh, creatives really embracing that, really looking at um, how they can improve their craft and how they can uh, change the way maybe that they ideate or change the way that they think about creativity. Mm. And then from a, a data kind of point of view, I would love us to start being less afraid of the data. Mm. You know, for people who aren't data scientists to start questioning how things work and what data came in and how they might change uh, the data that their organization is collecting so that when they apply machine learning or when they apply AI to it, they're sure that they're getting a really consistent representative out answer out of it. Mm. Well, I hope so too. I mean, it's, it's a really rich subject matter. Mm. I guess we all just kind of have to wait and see what the next 12 months holds. But thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much for speaking to us. And thank you so much. This has been AI Business TV. Thank you.